Okay, hi everyone. Today I'm really excited because I'm doing, obviously I'm looking at all of the avatars. There's a bunch of them and we're not going to be looking at this like top row, like all these normie ones. We're going to be going the deep cut route. We're going to look at all these like ones that don't have any names and like nobody knows anything about. What's so interesting about this is that these avatars were given official designs in the Legend of Korra book two art book i have it right here and i know a lot of you guys hate book two but something i actually really like about book two of legend of Korra is that they gave us this list or this like official design of all of these avatars all of the statues and what's so interesting about this particular image with all of these avatars is that they're in the actual order at least as far as we can tell they're in the actual order that they would have reincarnated in so that's pretty exciting. That means that this avatar right here was the oldest one. He's an earthbender. And then we go fire and then air, right? And then that's a waterbender. And then it keeps going. Um, so what is also really interesting about these avatars is that this is not the first time we've even seen these avatars. There's actually instances where these avatars have shown up in the show. And I will even show you instances where they've shown up as early as episode two of Avatar The Last Airbender. That's episode two, right? So that's pretty far in advance. I'm sure that these designs were um, thought of at the time. They were given, you know, character designs, and then they've been followed through all the way to these designs. It's very interesting. Okay, but first and foremost, I have to show you guys the website tumblr with um a great tumblr called atla annotated and this is a tumblr i use all of the time for a lot of my videos they are great a great resource for um a lot of the language and a lot of the stuff that um is really deep cut in avatar last airbender i would recommend i couldn't recommend this tumblr enough i don't even know if they even up continue to update this was all the way back in 2012 so this has been around since 2012 that's insane but thank you this person who made this tumblr in 2012 because now we're using it all right what is so significant about this this is if you do not remember i will remind you this is the calendar that is in wan chi tong's library in the episode the library in book two now this calendar is really significant because it's the only calendar we've really ever seen in the entire avatar universe and why it matters is because all of these characters right are in Chinese, which means that people can actually translate these and name them and tell you what all of these are supposed to actually be. And so obviously we have dates, right? So we have day, we have years, which the, the years that they use are a part of the um, zodiac, the Chinese zodiac, um, which we've seen referenced in Avatar before. Um, but what is the most interesting thing about this calendar is all of these little things that are now annotated here and these are all eras so we've heard the term era used right people have used the era of rava in the show um but it seems like this is the official kind of timeline in the avatar universe and how they themselves you know track their own timeline and they use all of these like chintai the yangwu Right. So the Avatar Wiki actually does have these labeled slightly differently, translated slightly differently. So, for example, Yang Wu is actually the, in this version of the translation, Yang Wu would be the era that is represented as Aang's era, right? So the era that is the era that takes place during Avatar Less Airbender. Um, but in the Avatar Wiki, they call it Riwu. Now, I'm obviously I don't know Chinese, so I can't validate one or the other. Maybe someone who knows more about Chinese can help translate this um, and find this website and and give some more clarity. I would imagine that the Avatar Wiki is probably more accurate, but you guys will have to tell me. Um, but the the bigger point here is that we have not only do we have day, you know, eras, right? So we know that Av Avatar Aang was a part of the Yang Wu slash Riwu era. What's so interesting about these eras is that each radical of the first character corresponds to one of the elements. So a radical is one of these mini symbols that's within one of the larger characters in Chinese, right? And the first one, kind of the one at the that's represented in each of these goes in the order of the Avatar cycle. So there is a little radical, you probably can't really make it out, but 
for this one, the first radical on the first character means air. And then on the next one, Chuntai, the first radical on the first character means water. And it goes on and on in the in the order of the avatar. So it would go water, air, and then that would be fire, right? And then the earth one would be that one. So it's in the order of the avatar cycle. Um, so not only can we estimate that Aang was a part of the Rewu era because that's what it tells us in the show. But we can also say, well, all of these correspond to an element. It's no co- It cannot be a coincidence, right, that the Rewu era is the one that takes place with Avatar Aang, who is an air avatar, right? And it can't be a coincidence that the first character in the first symbol or the first, char- uh, the first radical of the first character is air, right? And so if we go by this logic, we can find that Chintai, the Chintai era would be Korra's era, right? And then if we go on back, the Zhuagong era, the Zhuao Guang era, that probably, I'm probably pronouncing these so badly, but the Zhuao Guang era would be the one that is where Roku is, okay? So if we go back to our list of avatars, we can go ahead and correspond one of the eras with one of the avatars, right? And starting with, obviously, we're going to start with Roku here because Aang and Korra, we know we already went through. So I labeled them all based on the Avatar Wiki's translations, and I also put them, this is the actual order of the eras. So if you're wondering about these last four, so either this was the beginning of all of these eras or they just repeat the cycle over and over and over again. And this would be the avatar that would co- correspond to Korra, and then this one would correspond to Aang, and this one would correspond to Roku, and this one would correspond to Kyoshi, um, or they would reuse the same era names. Um, but everyone else has a unique name. So, I mean, these names could possibly just be kind of how you refer to these avatars, or you can just go with the nicknames that I see people give these avatars all the time. It's really, you know, we're going to go through it, though. So, obviously, these first, right, four avatars are pretty popular. We know Roku. He was a part of the Zhuo Gong era. Kiyoshi, obviously very popular, was the Yuo Zhang era. Zhang Shun era was Kuruk. And then the Fen on era was for Yang Chen. Now, less people know who Sito is, who was the uh, Fire Nation avatar before Yang Chen. He was a part of the Yang Chong era. I know that's a little confusing, but the one before Yang Chen was Yang Chong. Um, so he was a part of the Yang Chong era, but we don't actually know if who his previous predecessor avatar was. Sito has come up quite a few times in Avatar Last Airbender. He's been shown like exploding volcanoes. We've seen him in the background of certain scenes. So we know who Sito is pretty much for sure. Um, however, this character right here, um, right there, we don't actually know who this Earthbender is. A lot of people speculate that this Earthbender is probably Salai. And Salai is a great one of the great avatars from the past that was revealed in the kiyoshi novels we don't actually know who this avatar is we don't know much really or in anything about him except for or her um except for that they were a great avatar the reason why i think the fandom and i happen to kind of agree thinks that this is salai right here people think this is a lie because he is the other avatar before Sito that we don't have a name for. And he's been one of the most popular avatars also. He's been very prominent. He's he's appeared since Avatar Last Airbender as well as, you know, Sito. So his his design is one of the oldest ones, and it would make sense for him to be Salai, right? Um, Salai also, in my opinion, sounds more like a masculine name. Um, I mean, it doesn't... Look, I, I don't really know anything about the origin of that name or um, anything like that. But it sounds more like it makes sense for... Her an av- an earth bending avatar male that's who that is so it feels like it makes sense so that would put salai during the yao ping era um and that would also mean we that earthbender who looks like gimli is salai now i you know i think that that's a pretty reasonable assumption but you have to put in that caveat that salai could be any of these avatars besides you know these first 5 um now, the next avatar, we also, I th- I believe we actually also know who this avatar is right here. Um, I believe we know who the avatar before Salai, if this is Salai. Um, the reason why we know who this is is because in the avatar Yang Chen novel, in the beginning, there is like a scene where avatar Yang Chen channels like some of the other avatars and like starts to experience their memories. And one of the memories that she experiences is from the an 
a avatar named Gun, and one of the things that we learn about Gun is that he has lived during the Ru Ming era, and this is the avatar who would have lived during the Ru Ming era. He would have been a waterbender. I think it makes sense. Gun is probably this waterbender right here. Okay, so this also brings me to this image. This is probably one of the best views of the past avatars that we might ever get. Um, I don't know. We got this in the Legend of Korra at the end of that, um, the first season, obviously, when, when she, Korra, connects to Aang in her past lives for the first time. So obviously, like, these, you know, these ones, everyone knows who these ones are. I just went over that this guy is probably Salai, right? So we're just going to go ahead and put Salai. Okay, that's an A. Those are A's. <laughs> um, so we know this is Sito. Now, I believe this guy back here is Gun. Oops. I believe this guy back here would be Gun, right? This is Gun. And the reason why I say that this is Gun is because if you look, let's go back to our sheet, right? There are quite a few similarities in, and this is kind of how we're going to go. <laughs> this is kind of how it's going to go. If there are quite a few similarities, then we can assume that these are meant to be the same avatar, right? Um, one of the similarities that we see is this avatar right here. He has, I don't know if you can even tell, he has dreadlocks, okay? And he also wears this heavy winter like coat i don't know actually if they're dreadlocks they might be braids but he has like kind of dreadlock looking hair i should say um you know he's carrying a staff in this image i think it's actually a spear um a fishing spear and he also is wearing the parka now if we go back to our image of gun here we can see that there's quite a few similarities as well he has the parka on you can see that he has some hanging kind of dreadlocks um it's very hard to make out here let me let me zoom in a little Pull you guys out. Um, yeah, so if you look closely, you can see that he has the dreadlocks, he has the parka, he has enough of those elements that I feel confident in saying that this right here, this dude, my screen screen doesn't go that far. Um, that's gun, right? So I think most people are gonna agree with me. So if you look at like an image like this, um, you will not see gun because I believe that his design does not predate that go it doesn't go that far back um we do see salai right so like i said you know so here's roku right my horrible handwriting this is doesn't even look like it okay this is kiosh right this is Kurik. this is yang chen right this is sito and then right here in the very back you can hardly even see him this is salai right um now i don't know i don't think these ones back here are e i don't even think you can make them out so i don't think i'm even going to try to i mean we could zoom in we can we can can we do csi enhance no it doesn't doesn't look well i mean i did just like so even if you look i mean it it doesn't look like that is okay like you can even make these out so it looks like a short it looks kind of like a woman i'll be honest it looks short right but but we don't know i mean it could be the angle i mean compared to these to the one next to her or him so yeah i'm just i'm just giving you as an example that really like some of these avatars they don't go back that far all right and if i'm gonna just do some like baseless speculation about gun i would imagine that gun is probably from the southern water tribe he looks like he's from the southern water tribe he uses the same kind of spear that i think we see Sokka use in the very first episode so i think that this is probably a southern water tribe and especially because Kurik after him is a northern water tribe um avatar and Korra is actually technically her dad is from the north and then her mother's from the south so she's like half and half where this character, I believe, would be a full Southerner. As for the Yu Zhen avatar during the Yu Zhen era, uh, this would be an airbender, right? He seems to be holding this interesting staff. I don't know what it is. It looks, let's see if we can CSI enhance. Um, 
yeah, like, you can't even see because my head is blocking. Yeah, I mean, you guys tell me, what do you think the staff is? Do you think this is, this could be, it, what I think is it could be like a, like an early version of the airbending glider staff. Um, I don't know when those were invented. We've, you know, they've been around probably at least since the Yang Chen era, but you know, it looks, it's not as long as the one that we see Aang use. It actually kind of reminds me of the one that we see during the uh, Ember Island players when they do like the Boy in the Iceberg play. Um, Aang, like they have the parody Aang version, you know, the woman who plays him. She actually like glides on this glider that looks kind of similar or at least similar in size. So that could be interesting. It could be like a little callback. Um, yeah, I, I believe that there's some interesting details there. Now, as for this avatar, so uh, I don't know if we see this avatar, to be honest. I, I kind of believe it could be this dude right here, right? This could be him. I, you know, I don't really know. Like he, he's wearing, it looks like he's wearing kind of similar. Like if we go back to the um, other image, it does look somewhat similar, right? But there's obviously some differences. However, I feel like this is probably an a pretty accurate representation. Um, he looks a lot fatter, no offense, in, in the Legend of Korra than he did in the statue from the next season, but it's, I don't know, maybe he lost some weight or he gained a bunch of weight in, in his later life. I don't know, who knows? But I believe that this is probably the m most likely the Avatar we're looking at. Okay, and next is, oh, we're only halfway there. Are you guys were. <laughs> Okay, the next one is the Kundai, I believe that's the Kundai, the Kundi, Kundai era. This is an avatar from the Kundai era. Uh, they are a Fire Nation avatar. Now, there is some interesting, obviously, obviously she's this one right here. Um, the design's like one-to-one, -one, basically. They look the exact same. So that's why I, I mean, you know. And there is some interesting lore to this one because people actually thought that she didn't have arms. As you can see, it almost looks like she doesn't have arms. She does. You can see her hand right there, like right there. Um, and these are two sleeves, right? <laughs> They're like sleeves. But um, it's just that her hands are like behind her back kind of. Okay. But people thought she didn't have arms. So people thought called her the severed arm avatar. So that's what I refer to her as. She's the severed arm avatar. Speculation about her. Uh, da, 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 da. She looks like she could be like in the Fire Nation royal family. I guess like it does she does give that appearance she has this like weird headpiece if she's not in the fire nation royal family she must be like a like high-ranking fire nation noble or something right okay so we have mr swords guy over here now he was a part of the paiji era what's interesting about this guy is that the paiji era was actually the era that occurred the first darkest day in fire nation history aka the first eclipse where people figured out where the what the eclipse even was and that the, it affected firebenders or at least according to like what's implied in the show so that took place during the paiji era apparently and if you you know if you go by the order and the one that they appear in the book which is the order of that they appear in um then this would be the avatar during that era he would be an earthbender right which makes sense because i think it makes sense that the darkest day in fire nation history would probably be during like an earth it'd probably be like an earth nation invasion of the fire Nation. i feel like that's kind of what was going on i don't really know though but paiji that dude you know he lived during the paiji era he had a sword i guess Fire, firebenders feared him now what's interesting about this dude what makes this guy so interesting is that he was in the second episode wait the third episode of avatar the last airbender the southern air temple where he appeared next to roku as you can see there he is there's the dude he has a sword just like in the, the thing the statue now that's pretty curious right so i believe that this avatar probably actually was the one that is the one that was during the paiji era the reason i believe this is because they you they lifted that design for the um for that statue they lifted it directly from this design from the southern airbender southern air temple episode and then you know they i would assume calculated which avatar would be the one during the Paiji era and I think that they intentionally made this avatar with the sword because I mean he has a pretty cool design He has a sword. That's pretty cool. Okay, next we have the avatar who lived during the we during the Yi Wen Era now we don't actually this is the first avatar. We don't have a reference to 
in terms of images okay now it is i do find a little bit of a fascinating situation going on with her outfit now she almost looks like she could be a swamp bender now i i don't actually know if that's if it is that she actually is a swamp bender if i had to guess i would actually say she's probably from the northern water tribe the reason i say this is because her design actually resembles okay it took me way too long to find this but as you can see I actually believe she's probably from the Northern Water Tribe because she has a hat that looks kind of similar to a lot of the wardrobe that some of the commoners of the Northern Water Tribe wear. Apparently, it's um, based on some Mongolian hats, so that's pretty interesting. All right, and if we move me over, you can kind of see over here that waterbender. I mean, that's Katara. Boop. This statue right here, almost from the back, kind of resembles her, right? The re long avatar again. This is we don't have really an image for him. Um, now I guess there is a possibility that this guy back here could be him, except for his beard is like not long enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it's gonna be probably not fam. I mean, and as you can see, there are a few air nomads right around these parts, so we can maybe ascribe it doesn't. They don't look very, you know, uh, I don't, you know, I feel like Gandalf was one where they kind of came up with a design more later on and then they added it. So not really one I can find a reference on. Look out! <laughs> so the avatar during the Zhao Yun era, the Zhang Yu, is that how you say it? He was the Fire Nation avatar. He looks really interesting, like he could be some sort of military specialist it looks like an earlier version of uh some of the fire nation army that we see in some of the comic books uh maybe like a you know transformation period between those old fire nation military uniforms and maybe more of the modern kind so yeah i think re the ji yong i'm messing these names up the ji yong avatar i feel like he you know it's probably some sort of military military person and if we move me over we can see right here there he is so now we're moving on to the Ji Yuan era avatar. Now this avatar may actually be the most important, the most significant, and the most interesting out of every avatar I've covered so far that is not a named avatar. That is because this character is given a very significant role in the second episode of Avatar The Last Airbender. Now, in a blink if you miss it scene, they show a mural that shows all of the earth avatars that we know of including here is kiyoshi right if we move me over that's the lie right potentially we don't know if his name is actually sly but that's that avatar who looks who we think is a lie and if you look right here that dude has the same hat as our sword bending fellow from over here I think it's pretty obvious that this that this woman here at the front is the same Earthbender who was alive during the Zhu Yan, Ji Yan period. They even look the same. They have the little thing on their head. They have long sleeves, but this version is actually much more significant. Now, Kiyoshi does look a lot different than her official design. She's wearing orange, but you can see all of the design elements of Kiyoshi are there, right? She has her makeup, right? She has her little thing on her head right she has her samurai looking armor right so i believe that everything in this little image can give us a lot of information about who this avatar is and more importantly that this avatar was as this fight according to the earth stages this to this dude right here right according to this dude right here there he is um yeah that that this is the most important avatar basically the most important earth avatar i don't know why She's the most important. Um, I do think what's interesting is she has this hairstyle, right, that is almost similar to a lot of the hairstyle that is found in Bossing Say. In Bossing Say, they wear these like crown type things. Um, excuse, pardon my ignorance, but they wear you know those things that they decorate with flowers and all kinds of stuff, and they wrap their hair up in. Uh, and that is essentially, I think, what she's wearing, right? But I think this is an earlier version. It's not ornate. And if you remember in The Legend of Korra, the Earth Queen herself wears one of these things to, you know, instead of wearing a crown, she wears like this um, headpiece. So I feel like this could be an avatar who either started that trend or maybe 
more significantly, had played some sort of important role in the formation of the Earth Kingdom. Because another hugely, hugely, hugely important fact about this avatar, about the statue, and about the order of the statues, and about, you know, all of these era names. You know, my obsessive self, I did all of the math, and I figured out that if you took the average lifespan of a person and you applied it to all of these avatars. And then you also looked at Earth King Kuei, who was in Avatar Last Airbender. He was the 52nd Earth King. So if you take the average, you know, generations within a, a hundred year period, which would be about three generations per 100 year period, this Earth avatar happened, was alive around the exact time that the first Earth King King was crowned as the king and when he first unified the Earth Kingdom around Ba Sing Se as their capital. So she, I believe, played a hugely significant role being an Earth Kingdom avatar. She played a, a hugely significant role in form forming the Earth Kingdom as we know it. That's why I believe she is so prominently displayed in that um that portrait or in that mural, maybe she is the lie, right? Maybe she's the lie. She's one of the greatest avatars. We don't really know. But if I had to guess, she's probably someone else. Salai is the dude to the, to next to her. Kiyoshi's next to, you know, her on the other side. And those two avatars are hugely significant. Those Kiyoshi is one of the most significant avatars to ever exist. Same thing with Salai based on what we hear about him, right? Or her. So if so if that's the lie next to her, and if the person next to her is Kyoji, another hugely important, and she's prominently featured, she's the centerpiece, then she must be very, very important. And that's why I believe that she probably has something to do with the formation of the Earth Kingdom, which would have exactly, would uh, exactly add up with when she would have been Avatar. So just saying. Now, it is going to be kind of unfortunate for these last four, because there isn't a ton. I mean, really... We got a, We were spoiled with with Miss Ji Yuan over here. We were spoiled with with her being so prominently featured in the first or the second episode of Avatar: Last Airbender. These avatars we don't really know as much about, right? This Princess Zelda looking at a Waterbender avatar, right? She potentially could be the avatar that we see in Korra's vision. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not really sure about that. She would have existed during the Chintai era, which is uh, repeated with the Legend of Korra. So maybe that's the reason why she would show up in that um, flashback, I guess. Um, as for the other avatars, I mean, we basically have nothing to go off of. Uh, these characters were, you know, these are pretty much the most mysterious characters that we have in the Avatar world. But there is stuff that we can gleam just on their appearances. And one of those things is that now, I would believe that this avatar right here, the um, one with these big blocks on her head, I don't know exactly. She looks like she could be a northern water tribe member. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm not really sure. The style is not really something that we've seen either in the north or in the south. So it's very mysterious about who the identity of that avatar is. Um, as for the airbender, I think that he looks much more like he could easily fit in with either the northern or the southern air temple if i had to guess i'd probably say probably the southern air temple because we see that kind of robes um ang wear so i feel like that was probably where it came from um as for this fire firebender right here uh i believe maybe he could part be part of the fire sages or something he has this weird looking hat it almost looks like the same kind of hat that was um the people in fire nation uh you know, carnivals and the uh, circuses. It almost looks like one of the ring leaders. Um, but yeah, again, this is a kind of a mysterious avatar, right? And then the earliest avatar that we see here is an earth and an earth bending avatar. Um, again, we don't know really know anything about this avatar, but he is probably the one that we know a little bit more about than these other avatars. And I'll tell you because it is likely that this guy right, right here is who that avatar is um and if that is the case then i would go ahead and wager that he could potentially be a part of the gan jin tribe because he looks like he has a lot of the same wardrobe that they would wear in the gan jin tribe it's a little more 
uh you know toned back it's not as whirly and and beautiful obviously but it's the same colors it's the same kind of top knot especially when you if you see a better enhanced version of this image um it looks a lot more like the old guy from the ganjin tribe and the great divide so i will have to say that this probably is someone from the ganjin or maybe someone from that region who knows but wait there's more he is represented right here in this beautiful mural next to Avatar Salai, I guess, question mark, and the sword bender and uh, Miss Earth Bending Queen over here, who is like the most important earth earthbending avatar, apparently, according to the Avatar Sages. But he is out there in the in the background. He's just kind of there. Um, and you can tell it's him because he has the top knot, he has the must, you know, the beard, and even his wardrobe is, even though it is a different color, like everyone else's, like Kyoshi, like Salai, they all have different colored appearances in this mural but if you take the colors aside uh it's actually very similar to what we see in to what we see in the flashback uh you have these sleeves and this like i want to say like a sleeveless overtop kind of thing um so i would say that that's most likely him um and this character this design was reused from that old design and then they redesigned it again for a third time when they created the avatar art book for the legend of korra okay i know this was a long and arduous process getting through all of these avatars but i'm hoping that you learned at least something about some of these avatars who were just nameless and had no identities before this and you probably didn't even know about any of them now i can at least safely say that you know that these avatars not only do they are they just they're not just random statues that they decided to put into The Legend of Korra. They are, in fact, avatars who have shown up since the beginning of the series. And some of these avatars are actually very, very significant. And we will probably see a lot more about them, like this earthbending queen-looking avatar. Like the first day of Black Sun avatar with the sword. Like Gun right here, I believe. Gun is going to be a very important avatar. We will go ahead and see what they what they do with these avatars i'll be honest i'm really excited if you guys enjoyed this video please go ahead and leave a like this took a lot of time um you know it's gonna be more casual it was more like a laid back we just kind of analyzed you know what what the situation was with these avatars but let me know your guys speculation is there something i missed you know is there something that one of these avatars speaks to you and they say they look more like this or that, or I don't know. But let me know. Maybe there's some evidence that you guys have found that I could not find. That would be great. I would say probably look more in the comics, maybe. I don't even know if they show any of the other avatars in, like, the comics or in the books or, you know. I, I really was trying to look. It really seems like, um, you know, the few scenes of the past avatars that we get in Avatar Last Airbender and in Legend of Korra, they do have some hints at them. So... Um, if there is anything I missed, please just let me know. I'll talk to you guys on my next video. Thanks for watching.